They didn't know where it came from. So they issued a statement saying, no, the lecture is still on. Mm. And then came Malula's directive, uh, sent from Harare, that the lecture must be off. Yeah, that's the first. And I said to, uh, to uh, David, David uh, I said, David, don't understand the input of that letter, particularly since you are a functioner of the ANC. If I will identify them, let's go with it. And postpone it. Let's postpone it. Yeah. You know, indefinitely, but don't, no confrontation. Mm. <laughs> said fine. And then um, the rest is history, as you know. The second question is yes, I do suspect that there has been some discussions uh, between the ANC and ZANU mm -hmm. over the elections. Yeah. But I doubt that Trevor would be the one, and not Trevor. I mean, David uh, Masonda. Uh, 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 would be the one uh, in charge of it, because as I turned out, uh, when Cyril left on on um, Tuesday night, Tuesday evening, um, after the inauguration, inauguration, he left straight away, and Balula and his deputy were left. It appears to me they were discussing mainly Zanu ANC matters. I doubt that Fikila would be. Of the capacity to mm. deal with the what he calls delicate issues, mm. Mm. but I have no doubt that uh, uh, it had been conveyed either over the weekend or subsequently that uh, the region was not happy about the elections. There's no. Uh, I took two two hints from what Cyril said when he was interviewed on SABC. He was asked why he congratulating M Nangagwa. He said, "What well, is protocol?" When uh, the Electoral Commission announces somebody as a winner, as regional partners, neighborhood, we have to congratulate them. But that does not preempt the necessity of looking at the report. Mm. He said that. The SADC uh, body has issued a preliminary report. They are still going to sit down together with many other observers and analyze everything. So let's wait until all that comes out. But the Electoral Commission in Zimbabwe has made a declaration, and uh, it is on that basis that we have issued our congratulatory message. And secondly, I'll say that he came uh, for the inauguration on the same note, but also in addition, I'll say that there would have been conversations with other heads of state over the weekend. And and, and uh, many of whom would have said, look, sir, you're going to the inauguration, represent us, but also convey the message to Harare that we're not happy mm. with what has happened. Mm. So I think that the nature of the SADC report, not only SADC report, although everyone is emphasizing that, but all the other reports, uh, I met the observers myself, both the heads of missions and individuals, all were acutely embarrassed about what they saw. Mm. All. Mm. Jonathan, Mumba, mm. the uh, Namibian delegation, notwithstanding the grandstanding when they got back home, criticized the report. They all said this is the most, the worst election they've ever seen. Mm. So there is consensus about the, the uh, election, that this is a uh, Know that there's observers watching. I think it's our political culture to begin with. A political culture which goes back to the nationalist days when conformity was a rule. You conform if you're in Zapu, you must mm. conform. If you're in Zanu, you must conform. You must conform. And uh, people blame it on the one party state uh, tradition of the Eastern Europe. I don't think so. I think it goes back to uh, what um, Ali Mazrui called the monarchical tendency in African politics, where the leader is king. Mm? You conform. If you don't conform, you're, you're enemy. out. You're the enemy. Secondly, the extent to which in Zimbabwe in particular, opposition movements are treated as enemy mm. to be vanquished. Whether the it was, media and the opposition, yes, are whether it was Zapu and and uh, and Joshua and Como, enemies, almost killed Joshua. He didn't escape, of course. Edgar Tekere and Zoom, almost killed him too. Morgan Shangrai, almost killed. Right now, this young man. So opposition is regarded as enemy, to be vanquished, almost created an irony. Why do you have the so-called democracy when you, do, as Stephen Chen put it the other day, Zimbabwe has just opened a new parliament 
this yeah the front, Chinese bill yeah the front bench okay and the front bench don't you want a front bench of opposition no they don't want it no so it's a, it's a strange paradox but also it, it exposes both ignorance and secondly the extent to which elections now are used as a legitimate legitimating agency mm. for the illegitimate mm. Mm. and and it's pandering to the west and i have asked the western countries why do you insist on these elections as a center of democracy? And they are here. They pulled millions into the elections. EU, what, Qatar Center, they pushed money into the election. Regardless. Regardless of the warning lights. You know. You're talking of warning lights. One, one other comment that you said, which I found um, significant. You said, regrettably, CCC stumbled into a flawed exercise and witness the entire sham. The worst in the history of elections in Zimbabwe were back to the future. Could this have been avoided? It could have been. Uh, if, if also to highlight the flaws in our electoral law, to highlight the problems that have confronted us over the last three, five, five elections, to force the system to come to some kind of Consensus, there is need for reform. Mm. But in the face of non-reform, you stumble into it. Stumble was, was a modest. Yeah. Was a modest. Term. I had a word with uh, Shamisa on uh, Saturday, uh, last Saturday, and uh, he said, "You know, I know you're one of those who advise that we shouldn't go into the elections. Well, I think we just as well went into the elections because it exposes the system what it is. And no one to argue with. I said, maybe you're right, and I'm wrong. You know." But my point was not just uh, grandstanding uh, if they had stood away from the election. It was really to highlight the same problems we've had for the last elections. And you cannot continue going into it, mm. you know, regardless. And here we are, back to square well, one. What's the option? What's the alternative to not uh, participate, to, to participating? The ultimate uh, option is uh, mass action. That would be the one. Yeah. And... I'm told that on polling day, when um, the ballot papers were delayed into the afternoon, early evening, some in the triple C said, look, let's go on the streets. And uh, the, uh, uh, the leadership, leadership as pacifists said, no. Maybe it's right, because one of the things where discussions we had in the, in the surface trust policy dialogue a few weeks ago, you know, we've been doing an audit yeah. of the electoral process. And the conclusion was that these elections will be flawed. They will not yield the kind of results we want in terms of a free, fair, credible election. And one of the chefs who was on, from the US, a Zimbabwean, who has worked for Zesson for many years, he says, well, let's make a resolution that if Nelson goes ahead with the election and the, uh, the inevitable happens, happens, he must not push people onto the streets. He must take responsibility on his own. It was really telling. Wow. Yeah. Why should people die for him? He has taken a decision in their name. You know. So I uh, I will hope that we have learned enough of lessons about failed elections in Zimbabwe and the reasons thereof. And that and that's why, you know, we are pushing for the petition. The petition. No, they are wounded. They're kind of uh, uh, disparagement of the, the, the SADC report in particular is because the SADC report goes to the heart of the matter. It's your own organization telling you have failed. Yeah. And, the, and the, hence the clumsiness with which uh, Mumbai is being attacked. Clumsiness. Clumsiness. Childishness. You know, childishness. So Charamba's inane statement, you know, and wishing that this thing will, will be killed uh, and Zimbabwe takes over in August next year. You know, the real, we, we wrote, we wrote the rules, you know, I was involved in the writing of the rules, uh, the organ uh, document, 1996. Organ for security. Political mm -hmm. security, yeah. uh, defense and security. It was initiated by Zimbabwe. We were asked to do it in surplus and ratified in, um, in Botswana. Mm -hmm. He flew into Harare after the runoff. Remember, he sent, yeah. he sent generals here to look at the violence. And I, I, I had a discussion with Romano, who was head of the delegation. I took a, a number of people who had lost their hands to his to this South African embassy. He broke down in tears. And he showed me the report as we flew together to Joburg. You were still in Joburg at that time. Yes. 
it it was telling, you know. And yet that report was published, but it caused ripples in the ANC to the extent that um, in June two, two, 2008, the cabinet committee was set up on Zimbabwe mm. to look at the. And you know what happened? Yeah, they do, they uh, condemned the runoff, but Mbeki flew in. Bob was only at midnight. She was sick, and they flew together to Egypt to the summit, AU, AU summit. Genu in the making. Hmm. Genu the making. That's why we are making a distinction between a genu and transitional government. We'll come to that, but yeah, I I believe well I know because a proper our petition. I've been in touch with all the governments in the region, you know, at the level of ministries of information, of foreign affairs, I mean. It's clear that this would not be put under the carpet. It's there, there is clearly no legitimacy. Yeah, no, no legitimacy. And even one, someone even said that the inauguration the, of Emerson can be reversed under the rules, clearly. Uh, conversely, this is why Emerson and them pushed for the rush. The rush, you know, in the same way that Bob did in 2008. <laughs> same script. You, yeah, same script to, to preempt a Sadek position. Okay. Now, would, will Sadek allow that again? I don't think so. Ibo, I'm going to hold you there. Let's take a break. Don't go away. When we come back, uh, Ibo and I are going to get into. The petition that uh, uh, Ibo and Tony Ryla have initiated, which has uh, which is picking up uh, quite a lot lot of momentum. So, see you on the other side. Clearly, Emerson cannot uh, rule this country in the backdrop of the Sadek report. Welcome back to our conversation with uh, Dr. Ibo Mandaza, political an analyst, publisher, and the director of uh, the Sapes Trust. Ibo, when you look at the scorecard after the elections, as you and I sit here, the country is worse off than before the elections. <laughs> Legitimacy is gone. It's worse. Um, national fragility is a huge issue. Toxicity is going to be high. The sanctions issue even raises a bigger head. Commonwealth admission is off the table. Engagement, <laughs> which uh, uh, ED has been talking about, is almost dead. Mm. So what was the point? I think uh, looking back a few months ago, and I got this from very reliable quarters. Uh, Emerson didn't want elections. If also because he knew to be messy. And I think he also knew that he's unelectable. Absolutely. And uh, he sent out uh, uh, emissaries to Shamisa in March on there. To say, let's postpone the elections for two years. Let's have a government of national unity. And in two years, uh, I end over. I'm going. I asked my informant who were the emissaries, and they named them people in Emerson's cabinet, the inner core. I went further, I wanted to know what was the rationale behind the argument for. This postponement, yeah. GNU. And the response was that uh, the military were too involved in elections. Mm -hmm. And the one way of getting, putting paid to that was to have this. Well, I didn't want to pursue the discussion, but I, I sort of um, understood that the military was meant to anger, you know. Yeah. Um, but later on, I realized Fez. It's all this, remember, many of Emerson's inner core lost in the primaries because of Fez. Um, but this was a conversation a few days before Sharumbira's disastrous Karanga deal. Yeah, Karanga deal. 
And there was clearly a relationship between the offer being made uh, surreptitiously, so to speak, to, uh, to uh, Shamisa. Shamisa and the current deal. deal. Now, well, I know reliably that uh, Shamisa refused the deal. Okay. If also because he believed he was going to win the election anyway. Mm. You know. But I mention this because I think that the... I would not be surprised if Emerson throws up the idea of Virginia mm -hmm. uh, now to preempt the SADC uh, action, whatever it might be. And in keeping with on, it's all indication that he wants to leave in the next two years. Hmm. That's 2025. Five. Mm, he's not young. He says 81, but we know from our own records, he was born 1938, he's 85 next week, the 12th of September. So he's young. Mm 